Thank you for joining us at the Clive Barker Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your audio so you never miss a release. In episode 338, Jose and Ryan catch up with Joe and Catalina of Little Spark Films. We have a Kickstarter update, and there's a new book coming out by Phil and Sarah Stokes. Then we kick off the new round of the Duels of Blood. Go vote for your favorite Clive Barker characters. Welcome, this is episode 338 of the Clive Barker Podcast. Uh, good evening, Jose. Hi, Ryan. Hey, and we're joined by uh, Joe and Catalina of Little Spark Films. Welcome, Hello. guys. Hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. Straight from Texas. Yeah. Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, well, it's kind it's of cold winter right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to get some snow tomorrow and it was weird. Today they it sleeted. <laughs> they shut the schools down. Oh man. Yeah. Snow day for the kids. Yeah. Um yeah, I hope this this winter will be better for you guys than last last year cuz you know, we all know what happened in Texas in the winter last year. Yeah, at the beginning of the month we had a snow, uh, we had a snowstorm or an Arctic freeze, and uh, it wasn't as bad as last year. So, right. open Arctic, tomorrow. Arctic freeze. That's what they called it. <laughs> I, I actually live in the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Yeah, you would laugh at us. <laughs> you saw us. I think it's currently 40 now finally um, we're still like freezing i think ryan you you laughed at me a while ago and you sent me a picture of somebody you knew in a bathing suit in the snow oh yeah right <laughs> and we're just like bundled up hard once it goes below 85 degrees oh, oh sure yeah <laughs> 85 we're weak but yeah, it was the the temperature was really different for y'all when you came by uh, for Frightmare a few years ago. Yeah, it was raining. I oh, think. it, was, it was nice. I liked it. I mean, it was a little, you know, the humidity was kind of killing me. But uh, I was taking a couple of showers a day, no, just, not just because of the convention, but just because you're sweating on sweat on sweat on sweat. You're going into the hotel and out of the hotel, and you're ah, it's just terrible. By the end of the day, you just feel gross. <laughs> But that's why, for me, Arizona will always be my favorite weather. Oh, man. I think Fairbanks Catalyst. is dry like that, too. Yeah, yeah dry. Dry. Mm. Yeah, dry and, we, and cold, and most of the time we don't have any wind. So what are you guys up to in Texas? What What is Little Spark Films up to right now? We just got um, our order of uh, promotional bags to be able to hand out um, at conventions or VHS swaps. We got mm-hmm. way more than we thought we ordered <laughs> <laughs> that's I, good so yeah. are they cloth bags with a little spark films logo on it uh yeah yeah, yeah they're like the kind you know the reusable kind mm-hmm. um i mean i i use those a lot especially like if we go to the fair or whatever i sure. still i just keep those bags because yeah it's yeah. better to do it that way <laughs> yeah but we got red ones and black ones and they have a uh, white lsf uh uh look logos uh printed on them and they're really nice <laughs> i'm pretty i'm pretty excited to uh to hand them to out. Ha- yeah to hand yeah. them out that's awesome yes. we started the little we started um a separate account called little spark finds and we've just been collecting vhs to be able to go like go to vhs swaps and <laughs> talk about movies with people because oh, we always yeah. love talking about movies so might as well the vhs swaps are so fun because all you do is just, yeah, talk about movies and nerd out on movies. And most of the time at those events and even at conventions, Catalina pointed out that um, people don't ever have bags yeah, with them. They don't have bags, uh, you know, to. So that's why we she she suggested the tote bags. And, uh, yeah, we went and got those made. And uh, we hope that it does the trick as far as marketing is concerned. I used to always do that at the home show as a realtor. I, I we had bags, and uh, yeah. yeah, everybody wanted them. And if we saw at- rival real estate company bags with people, we would take their bag and stuff it into our bag. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta work on that brand yeah. recognition, bro. And I so- just stick a sign in front of their booth that says that their booth is for sale. Ah, <laughs> totally punked. Yeah. Uh, so I, little spark finds. So it's little underscore spark underscore finds on Instagram. 
I'm uh, looking at it right now. I see a picture of the bag. It looks really cool, guys. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, but yeah, well, it's right now is VHSs, and I think I'm going to start putting toys up there. It is honestly all the money that is raised from that account um, goes straight to like our movies, uh, you know, whatever it is, like, you know, tote bags or stickers, getting our mo- short films and film festivals, all sorts of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's actually paid for a few film festivals. It's paid for a few film festivals really? for Beyond the Desk and The Torturer. And uh, they're, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what it is. I mean, we haven't been to one in a couple months just because of the winter, but they should be starting up soon. So so Beyond Dusk is one we've we've talked to you a little bit about, but so that's finished now, right? Oh, yeah, it's a 10-minute short film we uh, finished last summer. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's about a man who and his brother are trying to bury a body. That's, yeah, that, that's an interesting uh, premise right there. <laughs> yeah, but they're not good at it. They're not good okay. at it. <laughs> yeah, but it's not something. Um, we it was a project that we were hired on to uh, to make. We got the attention of some distributors, and they wanted us to pitch them some uh, other stuff. So those pitches have been in the works, and I uh, Beyond Dusk is one of uh, two scripts that I'm. You know, marinating on as to where it's going to go. I, I hope you know that's something that we can see as a feature in the future. Oh wow, that'd yeah. be terrific! Right on. I see that you also not just uh, post pictures there on the uh, Little Spark finds, but you also sell or trade the stuff that you post. So if anybody's interested in this, trades or uh, buying via justice from you, I guess they can always DM you through that uh, account, right? Yeah, yeah, I've uh, been starting to get hit, so. Jumping back onto that account uh, is something I'm still trying to get used to, so I'll, I'll get it to everybody. But like, uh, I've just got to get in the swing of it. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I'll add that to, to the show notes so people can go check it out. Oh, thanks. Right. Uh, Vice Mares is currently in post production. It's uh, post production's a, a long beast, but you know we, it's cut together. And the runtime is just uh, uh, over an hour forty-five, and wow! Like I said, it's in post, so it's got a lot of uh, rotoscoping to undergo, and yeah. Because there's going to be like animated sequences in it. Uh, yeah, it, it it will, but it's it's going to be its own thing. Uh, you just kind of got to wait to see. I don't want to tell you too much about it. It's in post. Hope you like it when you see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. But, the, little... but it's completely edited. Yeah. Oh, so, good, I mean, good. when we say it's in post, we don't mean like, oh, it got sent somewhere else and it's not done yet. No, it's edited. It's just now we're doing like little nitty gritty yeah. parts of it. Well, yeah, I have like, I had to take a hard drive to, you know, to a guy who's working on our chroma key. When he's done with the chroma key, then it goes to Greece and then the illustrations and the animations happen. There's, it's happening in Greece and it's happening in, uh, I think the guy lives in Long Island somewhere. Oh. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those guys are doing the rotoscoping, and then it comes back to Arlington for audio mixing and mastering <laughs> uh, and scoring, and then do music. And music fully. And then after that, we do the color grade, and it's done after the credits are all typed out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Catalina was mentioning, you know, uh, get us getting ready to uh, cut together a new trailer, and we'll probably, you know, with a new trailer, I guess, comes a new press release. We're working on um, some pitch decks right now. Yes. And um, in order to put together a pitch deck, well, this is it's difficult because it's our first time doing doing mm-hmm. this, and you know, I mean, we're not we're not sales people, we're not marketing people, uh, so we're coming at it from a completely different perspective, but. Sure. Um, with the with the pitch deck, you have to have a log line, and a log line is actually incredibly difficult to write because it's only supposed to be essentially one sentence, like taking your film down to one sentence. Two two is pushing it. Yeah, two sentences mm-hmm. is pushing it, but they pretty much want it to be one sentence. Wow! And uh, we've been messing around with log lines all week. Okay. So going back to hearing the IMDb synopsis of Vice Mares, I'm like, dude, this is so long because I've only been working with one sentence this week. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. The, well, the, just hearing, just having them side to side was interesting. <laughs> For our Kickstarter update that we're going to get into in a bit, we're going to be uh, letting people know that we uh, got some codes for the torture. Is anything new on the torture front? 
Oh yeah, torture. It's uh, we finally got subtitles, so it's going to be subtitled and well, it's going to have English captions and subtitled in Spanish, French, and German. After that, then we're sending it off as soon as all that is coming in comes in. We're going to send it off uh, and see where it lands on distribution. We didn't have to do the subtitles, but from our research, we saw that subtitles make it a pretty safe bet that your pit movie is going to get picked up and put somewhere. Yeah, it's just the, yeah. the streaming services, they prefer to have that. We're the kind of people that we watch everything with subtitles, like sure. everything with captions on. Because sometimes you just can't hear, you know? Yeah. Of course. Um, it's the best way to make the torture go international. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then feel, you guys will I, end up I, going to it, international it, film festivals. It did. Well, we went to... It went to... It won an award in the UK, it, I thought. Well, no, it also it, it won an award in... Um, the Fourth Dimension Film Festival. Paul T. Taylor won for Best Actor. Yeah. And that was from uh, uh, Indonesia? Indonesia, oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, we won. Uh, Paul Taylor won for Best Actor in Indonesia. And he just won uh, a gold laurel for Best Actor with uh, the RS, RS Real Social Real Social Film Festival, which was sponsored by Lexus and Bristol. And it also won best. Okay, uh, so yeah, that was the one in the UK. That, that one. That was the one. Real in the UK socials also, in yeah. the UK. Still, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's in the UK. Yeah. So we won Indonesia and we won England. Once again, Americans, United States citizens, do not like us. <laughs> <laughs> we like, like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, y'all y'all count kind of, but don't. You're too far away. Oh. <laughs> There's definitely a vibe uh, in in American indie cinema that gets more successful out there than in here. Like a lot of trauma stuff happens to do that. They can be really cult in other countries, but here they're cult too. But it just uh, catches people in a different mood to to appreciate it a little more in other countries. Yeah, it's different audiences. Yeah, really. <laughs> but yeah, we got a couple pitch decks that we're working on and a couple scripts. And right now, it's kind of like you know rolling the dice to see what catches. Yeah, yeah, that's All awesome. Right. In the Clive Barker news, this is really interesting. Uh, a, a writer who's working with us, Ian Swanson, was kind of going through the internet and he found this book by Phil and Sarah Stokes called Clive Barker's Dark Worlds. So he he said, he, he, he wrote to Jose and I and he said, hey, I'm sure you guys probably know about this book already, right? And we're like, no. I, and in fact, I don't think anybody knows about this except for you right now, <laughs> Ian. And so I said, if you get this on our blog now, we'll be the only horror blog that has this story. Uh, right. I looked up, I Googled up, uh, this This project's called Clive Barker's Dark Worlds by Phil and Sarah Stokes from the Clive Barker Archive and, and Revelations. And I Googled the title and pretty much us and Amazon and Barnes and the top results for this. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we finally got a scoop. Yeah, yeah, and and um and he talked to uh, Phil and Sarah a little bit about it, and it uh, seems like they they weren't quite aware that the publisher had uh, had released the the um, pre order and and information about the book yet. So it's still kind of early. It, it's set to release in October of twenty twenty two. Yeah, so this October year, but, eighteen. Yeah, so this year, but I think they were still hammering out some of the details and the description and stuff like that of what it's about. Uh, right. So, so the article, if you go read it, it says that the people at Abrams, a, uh, Abrams Books, which is a imprint of Cernunos, they said that they got right now as a draft holding text and cover rather than the project's final description and is set for release this October, barring any last minute hiccups. And apparently it, they'll be right in time for Halloween. So you can pre-order it already on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and probably – the uh, Abrams Books website. Let's see. Where, where can I? Yeah, you got Books a Million, Bookshop, IndieBound, Left Bank Books, and Indigo. So you can order it in all these places. It's supposed to have like about 300 pages. According to their description, it, uh, it spans the movies like the, Hell- the Hellraiser series and Pinhead and, and uh, Candyman and Nightbreed and, and uh, the forthcoming HBO miniseries. That's what they have in their blurb, um, but that might be o- open to some change. We'll we'll see what it how it how it finally comes out when it's finished. Uh, the the other aspect of this that I'm kind of thinking about, I'm debating whether I want to pre-order it now or wait and see if Phil and Sarah might have copies on the Clive Barker archive and maybe they'll have autographed copies. 
Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah. wow. oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, that would be that would be great if they could get that. Uh, depending on whether they can get. Yeah, I, that's an interesting uh, point you bring up. Hmm. I was going to pre-order it tonight, but now I'm I'm yeah. I mean, if you don't care about signatures and stuff, yeah, go ahead and pre-order it. If you're a big Clyde Barker fan, Joe and Catalina, you guys are huge Hellraiser fans, so I'm I'm for sure this is going to have a lot of stuff. The cover is a hand drawing uh, of Pinhead by Clive Barker. It's done in like a negative kind of like, uh, so the, the drawing is white on black uh, background. I, I'm stoked about this because 300 pages. And, and then it also says illustrations, 300 color illustrations. So how does this thing have 296 pages and 300 color illustrations? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Find uh, out. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, I mean, I, I think so I think like Phil and Sarah said, it's still kind of early for the description that the that they that the publisher released. So I think there's probably going to be some time uh, where they'll be tweaking that a little bit. That's got to have more than one illustration per page. So wow. Yeah. That's a book. Yeah. So forty five dollars. It almost makes me wonder if it's like a coffee table size book. With all mm, uh, it's eight and a half inches by eleven and a quarter inches. So, yeah, yeah I think it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty it's big. Pretty big. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's about as big as like uh, the art of Grindhouse. No, it's uh-huh. not. Not that big. Uh-uh. Maybe like an Imagic uh, Imaginer book. I think. Yeah, probably an eight- Imaginer book. I mean, it's the regular size of a piece of like printer paper. Oh. Um, mm, okay. So yeah. yeah. Something like a coffee table book. I mean, it doesn't say... Oh, yeah, it does say hardcover. It's also going to be available on Kindle, which I think you can pre-order for $17. Uh, if you think 45 is too high for you and you just want to read it on your Kindle, you're going to miss out on the color illustrations, though, so I don't know. But uh, having physically having a book. Oh, it's so much better, right? It's always nice. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, we've had on our sidebar in our blog for years now that Phil and Sarah were working on a project which was going to be the history of Hellraiser. Do you think this might have been like that project that got a little more developed? That's kind of what I'm wondering. I mean, and now it's got a big, uh, now it's got, you know, it's got Pinhead right on the cover. Um, Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe they did. Maybe they expanded what it's going to be about. Because there was also that little book that went with the Arrow uh, edition of the Scarlet Box. Yeah. But I, I don't think that was it. No, people. we asked them and they said, no, that's not it. Mm, okay, so this yeah. might be that project that has been metamorphosizing over the years. It makes sense because if they're going to release it in conjunction with uh, the Hellraiser show and the movie, mm-hmm. and then maybe try to bring some new life back to the Nightbreed show, because yeah. there's been a lot of people talking about Nightbreed lately, like on Twitter, just all over the place. Oh, yeah. Someone was – people were talking about what was better, the theatrical or the director's cut, and they were talking releases, and then I just – I, I uh, just chimed in. Tomped in. Not really. Oh, like, we prefer the Cabal cut. And then I I think I tagged y'all's Twitter. Y'all need to get on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, crazy. He posted the article with uh, if there's a if there's a version where um. Oh yeah, I just go straight to y'all's. Doesn't die. Yeah. yeah, I go straight to y'all's website. Oh, and thank I find you. Stuff like that, and I just say, hey, go here. <laughs> Oh, all the all versions the- of Nightbreed explained. Oh yeah, yep. cool. I'm glad our well, blog you. post is is serving as a a, a reference uh, for people to check it out. Yeah, and Catalina, we you were still doing that A through Z of horror, right? You were reading that book on Insta T- Instagram Stories. I is it that- is that still going on? Yeah, she, she no, finished, right? I I finished it up. Yeah. Oh, cool. You did all A through Z. Yeah, I I released a new letter every week. And I pre-planned it like back in April of last year, and then uh-huh. I just counted out the twenty-six weeks. Yeah, um, I gotta catch up on the last few. Oh so yeah, I you're, seen. you're way faster than us. We're doing one letter a month, I think. Right, oh. but of course it's gonna take longer because it's only once every four weeks, approximately. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I need to actually update mine because as y'all release yours, I can change the uh, the YouTube links at the end. You know, like no, the recommended yeah. video at the end. And I've been putting part of the re- one of the recommended video is going to be y'all's oh coverage. My gosh. Wow, movie. thank you. Um, most of them are updated, but then I stopped, obviously, because I didn't have uh, the newest one. Recommended links like on the. On YouTube. 
Like on the very end, like if you watch a YouTube video and they're like, if you enjoyed this video, watch these. I didn't know we had any control of that over that at all. I'm you such do. A, I'm apparently. such a novice yeah, yeah. with YouTube. Yeah. That's, like, that's creating a card for your YouTube video, right? That, yeah. That's but, what it's called. Yeah, but it does it automatically. You just t- you just tell it which one to do. You just tell Neat. it which video to do. Oh, my God. Neat. Yeah. We, we it's definitely... a lot easier than it was previously. Well, if it's easier, yeah. we'll we'll check out how that works and uh, definitely try to put, like, on certain episodes, maybe suggest others, like a Hellraiser episodes, suggest other Hellraiser commentaries and stuff like that. Yeah. So people can keep on, like, clicking and watching. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that would actually be really beneficial for y'all's uh, for y'all's YouTube to do that. Oh my god! And then people just kind of like keep going because you know how sometimes you get like down a Wikipedia rabbit hole. You yeah. do that with YouTube sometimes, uh-huh. yeah. right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then it's three in the morning, and you're watching some guy drink a glass of water on YouTube, and you're thinking, "How the hell did I get here?" <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole channel. Yeah. It's like I found a whole channel. It's just a guy every day he posts a, a video of himself drinking a glass of water. That's great. We're learning stuff from you already. I mean, this is great. I'm glad you guys are here. Kickstarter. So our money finally came in this morning as we're recording this. It's Thursday. Uh, today is Thursday, the twenty fourth. Of February, as we're recording this, the money came in today, so I took a trip out to the post office and I um, shipped out probably three quarters of the of the back of rewards. Um, oh yeah! So for people that are are waiting, I'll be you know I'm I'm gonna be uh, probably by the time you hear this, you'll have your tracking numbers and stuff like that. So one thing I found out because of COVID um, that Australia has locked down really hard anything about shipping to there. So the really? you know the the smiling world poster we had somebody buy the smiling world poster, and I put oh it's a small little poster you know shipping twenty bucks should cover it seventy one fifty. Wow! Wow, that's crazy I, for I Australia. Took, yeah, I took it back and and I'm gonna have to contact him and say hey this is what happened w- what do you want to do I can't you know we can't ship it for <laughs> that's too much that's crazy. Oh my god! Yeah! Wow! That's insane. Yeah. To take it across the world to the other side. Yeah, it's they've they've like locked down a bunch of stuff, and I don't know the, a whole bunch of shipping options were unavailable, and the only one available was seventy one dollars and fifty cents for this little flat envelope thing. You know, that was stiff. Jesus back Christ! Envelope. Okay, That's wild. Yeah. That's more than what he uh, pledged. Yeah, I wonder if I sent it FedEx, if it would have the same restrictions on it. Uh huh. Oh, that's try a good. It. Yeah, yep. good thing yeah. to look into. Give it a try. It's still going to be more than 20 bucks, though. I'm just stoked we have a listener from across the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In yep. Australia. Yeah. Actually, Were we have you... two things to Australia. There's the other one I didn't have a label yet, so that one I haven't even tried, but... That's you upside be- down Australians, you're enjoying summer while we're here stuck in Ohio winter and Alaskan winter and Texas yeah. winter. Yes, it sucks. Yeah. I, it's got to be weird. To live in a place where Santa Claus wears Bermuda shorts. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> all the stuff for Christmas, it's always marketed as like snowy, like village in the Alps or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like if you grow up in Australia, Christmas is summer. And it's like how do they oh, – yeah. there's got to be some cognitive dissonance there with all this like weird – Western supremacy of like or North North Hemisphere supremacy of like, hey, winter is Christmas. I don't know. I don't know my points. It's I, I like live next to a town that has candy cane shaped streetlights. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You live near the North Pole, Alaska. Well, it's not the it's not the North Pole. It's just called North. Pole. Yeah, it's a town. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's south of here. <laughs> they need to elect the mayor, some guy called Chris Kringle. They're, they did. They had their mayor. They was, did. Their mayor was legally named Santa Claus. Oh my god, that's awesome! Yeah. Wow. But what's so funny is that we have a town here. Okay, it's it's like a town over. It's right outside of the. Actually, y'all know about it, but it's a town over. It's right outside of the um, the uh, airport, the DFW airport, Grapevine. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Where y'all, y'all were in Grapevine. Yeah. yeah when you here for Frightmare. Grapevine, every year, starting in, you know, early November, it, they turn themselves into the Christmas capital of whatever. I mean, it kind of seems like that town that you're near in Alaska North Pole. is probably the Christmas capital of the United States or whatever, because I think that's what Grapevine says they are. They're the Christmas oh. capital of the U.S. Yeah. or something. We should ridiculous. start some kind of war between them. 
You should. Feud, yeah, that would Christmas be awesome. feud. Yeah. Battle of Christmases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, we have the Santa it's, Claus it, house. Yeah. Grapevine was very picturesque, and I know that's wine country and stuff. And uh, uh, there were some nice houses where we were staying uh, yeah. for Fright Mare. So wine country. No? They like to say that they're wine country, but they're not. Okay. Well, the, the, okay. All, all the signage no, in our Airbnb w- yes. would would disagree with you. I what know. Yeah, say, I, and I, they had like chins, cheap, cheapo like these signs that would say it's five o'clock. Yeah, from Home Goods. And, yeah. Yes, Home Goods signs. <laughs> when I worked retail for Home Goods, I got tired of. Yeah. Eat, pray, love, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Duels of Blood, right? Yeah. Round yeah. five. So we're we're starting it up round. again. Actually, the last uh, the last series that we did was in uh, was volume four in 2019, three years ago. So we're bringing Blame it, it back. on the pandemic. Yeah, this is the final round of the Duels of Blood. And we uh, we took the runners up and, and the, the ones that won the winners and the and the ones that were in the, the, the final rounds of each of the last four years. And put them against each other in random order. Hmm. So, yeah, so we got some matches like, you know, Piopa from the Magica versus Onaka from Nightbreed. Uh, you know, it's it's going to have characters from all of Clyde Barker's books. It's going to have Cenobites and Nightbreed and uh, characters from books like Mr. Hood, the, the guy from The Thief of Always. So it's going to have a very diverse set of characters um, pairing up against each other. And it's going to be like a... Yeah. Um, uh, a March Madness kind of bracket system. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, the voting starts on Sunday, which is about when this when this uh, episode will air. So there's a link in the show notes. You can click on that and just start voting and see who goes on. Actually, there's some random pairings that were interesting, like Chatterer versus Pinhead. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gate. That's tough. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I think that has that we. I swear we did that randomly, but I remember one time Nicholas Vince was disappointed when that pair, that same exact pairing happened happened before in the past. Because he thought, "Oh no, I'm going to lose against Pinhead." Yeah, because <laughs> it's like if he was up against some something else, he would, you know, he, his character would last quite a bit longer. Yeah, yeah, we got more than one Pinhead in this in this in this hat uh, yeah. too, because we got Pinhead from Judgment, played by Paul T. Taylor. We got uh, the actual Hell Priest. We got Zudo Pinhead from Revelations. Ugh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping he's going to lose out in the he, first. He's going you know. up against a, a really obscure uh, comic character's uh, Bright Eyes and the Voice. Yeah, I'm putting, cool. I'm putting my money on Raul, uh, <laughs> the character from The Great and Secret Show. Yeah. The monkey guy. Against uh, Candy because- Quackenbush. I, I know, man, but it's like my brother's name is Raul, and I like monkeys. So I don't know. I, I'm thinking about voting for this guy. Okay. Well, well, don't don't say that too loud because you got to get your brother to ship stuff down to you. <laughs> hey, I didn't say my brother was a monkey. <laughs> you, but you didn't say that he's not. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting pairings. Uh, yeah. Candyman versus Ghost, the Berserker, the White Berserker from Nightbreed. Yeah. Uh, mm. I, Nicholas Vince is going to be like, "Oh no," because he played the White Berserker Ghost, oh, right? Yeah, Cabal oh, versus yeah. female Cenobite from Hellraiser. Oh. So not Barbie Wild, but uh, Grace Kirby. And 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 Paul T. Taylor as Pinhead is going up against the walking city of Popolak from In the Hills, the Cities. <laughs> yeah. That counts as a person? Yeah. I love, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, God damn it, I want to vote for Popolak. But I, you know, Paul T. Taylor, Popolak, yeah. mm, I don't know. Yeah. If it's... you put the torture and Andy Brooks in there, it would have been funny if, if the Judgment Priest and Andy Brooks – we're up against each other because oh, yeah. yeah yeah right paul would just still be torturing himself <laughs> yeah. so still wins <laughs> right no spoilers no spoilers yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah yeah no one's seen it yet that's right <laughs> so it's gonna be fun how many times can people vote uh how often can people yeah. vote ryan well, i guess i yeah oh, i mean I, I have to set this <laughs> the settings we in in previous years it's been like every five minutes uh, so it's whatever we set it to. I can set it to every five minutes. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay. Damn, dude. <laughs> you know that Anaka's going to win this whole thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope so, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, it, it depends on if we tell her or not. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. she's going to find out. She's going to know. No. This is sounding like a TikTok. They're going to know. Yeah. Dude, Nobody's going to know. Versus Say. my opa. Well, it, so the oh. last one, was it the last? No, it was 2018 when we were at Texas Frightmare Work Weekend. We had a yeah. major rivalry ver- between, basically, between Lori and somebody from the Paul D. Taylor, like Hellraiser Judgment fan or whatever. Oh, right. The yeah. one that yeah. ran uh, a Judgment Promotions, Hellraiser Judgment yeah. Promotions. Yeah. 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 They were they were like voting a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um... Yeah, we were part. It was a whole team of like three or four people, and then one of those people, they've been having a hard time. You know, oh, yeah. obviously, mm-hmm. this past few years, um, and they yeah. ended up getting into it with Paul. So I don't even know what they do anymore. Like they don't talk to anyone anymore. No, they still they still talk. They... No, they Ooh. don't. Oh, they don't. No, this happened a few months ago. Uh, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so Lori is going to be unchallenged. <laughs> yes, she will be unchallenged. <laughs> she just goes straight for the finish line. <laughs> I mean, I I I try to only vote once on each round uh, because one, it's our it's our thing. So I'm yeah. like, I'm not going to be skewing anything, yeah. but, uh, man, the temptation is like, when you start clicking on those little vote buttons, you start getting that little bug biting you and you're like, Oh man, I want this guy to win. I want that guy to win. And it's like, yeah, but usually I just vote on one character per round. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And, well, and you <laughs> have to, you have to vote to see how they're doing. And that, yeah. that, that's why I do it. Cause I, I'll just vote the one time per day. Because I want to see where they're at, and and then we have to do it when we when we set up the podcasts to talk about you know how they're doing. Sure. In previous uh, rounds, the the first round always has the most characters, so it always gets like thousands of votes. Well, yeah. hopefully this year we'll get thousands of votes as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I like the idea of it being so many characters, different characters. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. I had fun that last time. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we we haven't done it in a while because just the the having certain people like take over kind of and and uh, and where you can predict from the beginning who is going to win that was a little tough. And where can they find this uh, this uh, fifth round of the Duels of Blood to vote? So just go to www.duelsofblood.com. D u e l s. Like fighting duel, not like not like duel meaning like two things. <laughs> yeah, d u e l s o f b l o o d dot com. Yeah, duels of blood, the final round, volume five. Yeah, I think this is going to be the last time that uh, that we'll do this because I mean we're we've we've run through all the characters we could think of, and especially all the ones that we could get pictures of. Coming next, and actually, Joe and Catalina, I'm glad that you guys are here because coming next, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be returning to, to Jericho Squad seventy seven. Hey. It's been a couple of months now, right? I think our last one was in uh, December. Is in December it was the yeah. s- season finale? Yeah, yeah. So we'll be I- bringing that back again and seeing the aftermath. Um, one one hint that I told I told uh, Jose about was that you guys were all kind of busy arguing with the cameraman and and I'm uh, running towards that river. I'm yeah, running towards yeah. it. I'm jumping and, in. And uh, and um, Bentley was face down in the river, unconscious. Oh no, Bentley! No, we lost. Uh, Bentley. It, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Uh, we'll see who uh, volunteers to give him mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yeah. Lori's a healer. Right. Oh, sorry, not Lori. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. There's hope for Bentley, uh, yeah. listeners. Don't don't fret. Yeah. Jonathan will probably we try, try to pancakes. eat him. What's that? What's that? Where are we going to get our pancakes if we let Bentley die? That's right. Well, right. It's, it's, yeah. I, I imagine and how are we going to? One of the people there probably VHS? knows how to make co- pancakes. Oh, we don't know that. <laughs> oh, I make some good pancakes, yeah. but I don't know if my character makes pancakes. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. He, you guys ever makes... made pecan pancakes? They're he, so good. They've got a secret secret Uretimec recipe for pancakes that's completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I whip it's... the eggs with my ribbon sword. You, or you, <laughs> you, you smash a gravelant uh, rat with a hammer and dry oh, no. it out in the sun. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're killing me. Um, yeah, Jericho Squad. Can't yeah. wait to... Uh, I can't believe I threw my enemy through the portal to hell without looting him first. That was so dumb no, of me. No, it wasn't. I mean, you're you're doing what your character would do in the moment. You're not yeah. thinking about loot. Yeah, I still got to face my brother now that he knows that I've just condemned uh, yeah. his political opponent to hell. Right. Yeah, but to him, hell is not like doesn't have religious connotations. It's just sure. another it's another plane of existence. Yeah. And we got Ralph and uh Ralph with his like stone hand. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta figure it's, out it's how kinda, to make that it's not thing. Exactly more, stone. More it's just kind of mummified. Oh, okay. It's that it's a Baphomet yeah. hand. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, it helps him out. It's not like uh it's not like crippling or anything. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to beginning a new season because I, I got bit by the uh, D and D bug, and now I'm, All you right. know, I was a noob, <laughs> and now I'm into this. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. I mean, it, it, like that last go around, uh, you know, we we, you know, we were actually working like a team. I felt like <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Dude, what we had already suffered through. Yeah. We were like, oh, man, we're leading up to this battle, and we just had to get our bearings down. But um, out the gate with this that last episode. I think it moved really well, and, the last episode. I mean, everyone was on point, and we flew. It was uh, a little funny when uh, we were trying to debate into the political debate. And like, and ultimately, it's like the, the, the blasted seagull was just trying to tease everybody. And we ended up just fighting, but uh, that that was interesting. Well, I, yeah, I just kept thinking, like, if if somebody's making your uh, an illusion of your mouth in front of your face, saying different things, you would put try to put a stop to it, right? Right. I mean, you, right. You, you wouldn't just sit there and go, "I don't remember saying that." You can't out illusion a wizard. That's yeah. the thing. But anyway, people are probably thinking, "What are these guys talking about?" Go watch them on YouTube. We got. <laughs> yeah. The season one of Jericho Squad 77, yeah. we go through uh, Midian, uh, Weave World, and Imagica. It's great fun. Yeah, and and uh, and the hell of Down Satan. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. And, and another thing. Time. <laughs> yeah. And another thing. We, it, There's a video with highlights. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank Thanks you so much you for doing that. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea where it went. I just sent it. In. Oh, it's in the it's in the RPG channel. Oh, really? Um, on YouTube, yeah. Oh, I, that's why I haven't shared it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I will share that. I mean, that not channel, now. but the, the, the RPG playlist yeah. on, on our the channel. Playlist. Yeah. Right, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh. Another thing that's cool to have you guys here is uh, um, we got a commentary track coming up for Jojo Baby, the documentary. Yeah. Jojo Baby without the mask. <laughs> And uh, we actually, uh, you know, we heard more about this from you guys and you helped us uh, get a copy of it. So we got this documentary. It's about the uh, the world of eccentric, unsung Chicago artist and club kid, Jojo Baby. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one because it seems really interesting. That is it a is fan- so interesting. That is a fantastic Y'all are gonna documentary. Enjoy it. All right. Well, you, maybe you guys will be able to do- join us, too, depending on the timing and stuff. Probably Joe. Joe's kind of been the one jumping in for the for the commentaries. Okay. Uh, sure. I guess I so. just volunteered him. <laughs> <laughs> also, okay. it's just like it's a it's a really good documentary, but it's incredibly emotional, and I don't want to feel emotional right now. I think oh, we have, yeah. I think we watched it's, it twice. Oh yeah, it's excellent though. Like oh, seriously, wow. it's excellent. Really? Yes. We, we- we watched it twice immediately. Uh, God, I had to buy it on eBay. Something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, it was really it was a hassle to find hmm. to find yeah. at all. It's weird because I was looking it up uh, uh, just now to see the synopsis of it, and uh, I found a page from uh, Prime Video, but it says this video is currently unavailable to watch in your location. So I was like, "Wow, it's not even on Prime Video. You have to get the actual disc for this." Yeah, it's an independent film mm-hmm. that uh. Barker, <laughs> his name on yeah, that's cool. But it doesn't uh, talk about their relationship at all. It talks about no, JoJo just, and uh, yeah. JoJo's life and oh. and uh, what inspires him to create. And then it, it yeah, it's just it's very interesting. His life really like dolls. Yeah, 
I got a, I'm looking at a review right now on Amazon. It says, I was interested in this because Clyde Barker was a producer. More people should know about Jojo Baby and his art. I'm glad I bought this. Be prepared, though, for a lot of penis. And you know you will have pleasant dreams about Jojo Baby dressing you up the night you watch this. My wife had cool, weird dreams, too. <laughs> okay. So that's an uh-huh. interesting review. Yeah, it's- I guess there is a lot of penis. The movie is a total <laughs> art. I mean, you. you I don't yeah. really think about it. <laughs> Clay Barker fan. You remember that uh, that pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. <laughs> yeah. If you put pizza on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. Imagine that with penis. Penis in the morning, penis in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally lost. I don't know that. I don't know either one of those songs. It was an no, ad. It's, it's, it's it was an ad from, for pizza bagels. Yeah. Oh. You know the little mini bagels that have the pizza on top? Yeah. Stick when, them in the microwave. When was that? Yeah. That was that, a, was the, that was their jingle. That was oh. a jingle. Stage. Yeah. Yeah. I out right. Americaned Ryan here. <laughs> we well we haven't we we haven't had like broadcast or cable TV since Joel was born and he's ten now. Oh no! This is from like Joe's in my childhood. This is from yeah, like the nineties. The nineties. Okay. <laughs> Making it me was feel so old. No, no, no! It's just it we watched. Japan. Obviously, we watched a lot of TV. Yeah. yeah. Weren't you? Yeah, I think you were probably in. Weren't you I, in? In ninety five, I was in Japan. Yeah. yeah then yeah. you were in Japan. That's why you missed it. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Pizza. That makes in, more sense. In the morning. Actually. But. Pizza in the morning. Yeah. Sure. Anyway. Uh, Jojo baby. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it's a really good documentary. And uh, there's some really cool stuff about um, Muppet related things. Yeah. There's the, Jim, the whole segment with, that's related uh, yeah. to Jim Henson. It's about company. Jim Henson. Yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, so that, so yeah. you'll like that. You'll love oh, that. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that, that was a really great, you know, segue into the, into the movie, but it's a total art film and uh, I recommend it. Finding a copy somehow. <laughs> I'm looking at a video on YouTube of Jojo Baby. It's got his workshop full of dolls. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll also be coming back to the the uh, A to Z commentaries again. Uh, going back to Clive Barker's A to Z of horror recommendations. T for torso. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, David Cronenberg's The Brood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I think the bulk of that chapter is actually about that. Oh God, what is that? That movie with Julian Sands, that terrible, terrible. Um, uh, I Warlock. Was say, I was hoping that you guys were going to watch boxing. Boxing. Uh, oh, boxing, Elena. Elena. Oh my God. Yeah. Because I've never seen watched it. that. I've Didn't never seen that it, and I still want to watch it. When when you watch it, it is. I mean, it was. It seemed like it was sort of controversial or or tabooish at the time. When you watch it, it's like a it's like a cinematic sort of a yeah. It's cringe when he's like it's watching a, her take her clothes off and he's standing yeah. like, like a kid on top of a tree jerking off. Yeah, it's like a soft core. It's just it's just terrible. And yeah, yeah, and and well, I'm I not going to spoil the ending it, for you, but but yeah, uh, it's got a it's got an ending that's a cop out. That is, that, I think that's what they mentioned. They mentioned in the book, like, I got all excited for the idea of it. And I was like, man, this actually does sound really interesting. I, I love this idea, especially since it's a female filmmaker. I want to uh, you know, I want to know more about yeah. it, right? Yeah. And then he did, they did mention that um, she was very adamant about how it wasn't a horror film. Because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you know, of course, like, <laughs> horror, saying that you like horror still carries, like, stigma to it. I don't understand why, but. Um, sure. Um, so she was very adamant about it not being a horror film, and I think that that was the reason why they changed the ending. They did. Oh. They mentioned it. They, they don't I say see. what the ending is, but they just said that it took away from the ending because it wasn't able to go like full throttle, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I hate when movies do that when they're not where they're like, "Here, we're going to give you all this stuff," but they don't give you all the stuff. <laughs> but I can see <laughs> a little bit of promises, yeah. and then they don't follow through, and I'm like, "You jerks." Yeah, but I could see what they were going for there at the end. It was like, you know, literally a woman being turned into an object, you know, by 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 this guy and being literally put yeah. on a pedestal. Um, yeah, so I, I I could see the intention of, yeah, of the well, director. The, the, the premise is it's an interesting it's an interesting premise, but uh, watching it again as an adult, it's like, oh my god. Now I remember why I thought we already done that one because I saw that movie when we were talking about yeah. the. 
yeah. the, 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 this letter in particular. So did I. When we were yeah. talking about the book. Yeah, I yeah, saw I this episode. Again then. And, and we got to revisit your hatred for it, the band Enigma. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enigma? Yeah, they do the yeah. soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, they this do the is soundtrack the voice of Enigma. Boxing Helena? Yes. Wow. Do, that's... Do, do, do. Yeah. <laughs> this I is the voice you know, of I'm Enigma. I'm disliking the idea of watching this movie more and more, but <laughs> yeah. now I'm like, this sounds like a dumpster fire. <laughs> There's a movie that one, the, the vampire movie with Julian Sands that we watched. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, what was that? It was called Vampire. Oh, oh. my God, it was so bad. It was yeah, that's just one of those. Yeah. Well, because our friend has been dropping over so many VHS, we have all these uh, films that otherwise wouldn't be on streaming, you know, yeah. because they just never made the jump. I think he's oh, a great yeah. actor, too. It's just he's Batman. gotten he's gotten some corny kind of roles. I liked Warlock. Oh, there was an actually there's a newer film that he's in on. I want to say it's on Hulu, actually. And it's yeah. called Into the, the Dark. Dark. Into the Dark series. Yeah. And it yeah. was called... Um, um, and a nasty piece of work. Yes, that one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, we didn't want to watch it, but we were <laughs> letting someone else pick, and they were like, "This is what we want to watch," and we're like, "Okay, uh, fine." And it's it such a out, weird movie. It was cute. I think it turned out really well. Like it worked out, and it okay. was a location thing. It was super fun. I, I need only to give had it another watch for a, a trial week while we were doing yeah. covering uh, books of blood. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it's still not on tangible media. I know. The only place you can get it is like a bootleg from Russia. And I'm like, ah. Which is weird to me because yeah. they went through the trouble of making the tie-in book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They put no, the, they have the, the tie-in yeah. book. So why wouldn't you have the, the you know, DVD, Blu-ray, with whatever, yeah. the yeah. tangible yeah. media option to go with yeah. the book? Yeah. I agree I with mean, you. I guess yeah. just because they want they want people to stay subscribed. They're like, oh, you want to watch this again? Well, you're going to keep paying Fifteen dollars a month forever. Yep, that's yeah, how they get you in. All right, cool, cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you guys are listening to this, go if you want to check out. Uh, if you like Enigma, if you like Julian Sands, yeah, give <laughs> give Boxing Elena a try. Uh, <laughs> send your hate mail to clinbarkercast dot com. No, no, no. Actually, um, I haven't checked our voicemail in a long time. I wonder if we have hate mail in there. But we decided to go with uh, The Brood for Torso. So yes. that's going to be uh, a cool rewatch because I haven't watched that movie in like 20 years. Yeah, I, well, I, I watched it, I think, because you were telling me that I should watch more David Cronenberg movies. So I watched that one and and uh, Dead Ringers and... and um, Love Dead Ringers. The one with oh, the fly. Set. I have like three copies on VHS of that right now. Oh, uh. <laughs> You know, I have a little bit of love, uh, not just for The Fly, but The Fly 2. I, I know people think The Fly 2 is terrible, but I, I kind of like it. Um, I once got a, a DVD of, like, box set of The Fly 1 and 2. two the second the one is Mick, not Cronenberg. It's a Mick Garris one, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah good point. Yeah, yeah The Fly 2. I, I like it. I think it, it, it actually is a, a cool continuation of the story. But anyway, ah. so... Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I've watched The Fly. The, the latest movie from Cronenberg that I've heard about is the one where he has a silicone uh, copy of his own body as a corpse. And he just uh, he just made like this short film of him just crawling up in bed with his silicone corpse body and just uh, coming to terms with his mortality and then he gives it a kiss on the forehead and leaves the room it's just it's so cronenberg i mean, oh, mean. if you yeah it's he's done some really weird shorts like the picture of the last movie maker in the last theater uh it's this short that you can find on youtube i think the the last jewish filmmaker in the last theater of the world uh you should watch that it's kind of weird hmm. interesting I'll send you guys a link through the chat. Yeah, please. Right. Yeah. We watched uh, the last Cronenberg movie we watched was uh, Crash. Mm-hmm. Well, that was new to us. Yeah. It was new to us. That was but the last new to I mean, us. Like, I've seen that one. I liked it. Yeah. It was not as it was not as messed up as everyone kept on saying it was. I don't know. I saw it in the theater. Yeah, I thought it was pretty messed up, but in a good way, you know. Yeah. yeah. 
No, that's what everyone everyone just complains about it so much. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoy. Yeah. yeah, it's a fetishization of like the car culture and car crashes, and people get you know uh, their kink is car crashes. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. You know, people who obsess about true crime. Some people obsess about you know what was the car that James Dean died in the uh, spider, whatever it was. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah, it's right. a good one. We like when we like Brandon Cronenberg too. Um, his he released um, antiviral. Yeah, but yeah. what was the one he just repos uh, re uh, repossessor, and that came out I guess probably about two years now. Yeah, in twenty twenty, um, and a lot of people were talking about that one. So if y'all hadn't checked that one out, it's pretty interesting. What was it called He's again? Very good. He's a very very good filmmaker. Possessor. Possessor. Okay. I'll give it a I'll give it a shot. Yeah, but antiviral is his first one, and I love that one. Hmm. Cool. It's definitely body mm -hmm. horror. They both are. They're great. Oh, I found the trailer for it. Okay, is it, is this chick the chick from Mandy? I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, okay, she looks like the the Andrew. girl from Mandy. Uh, anyway, I still probably need to watch not. that movie too. Like I haven't her. seen that. Oh, Mandy? oh, dude, Mandy's so much fun. That's what I uh, heard. Yeah. I need to just buckle down and rent it. The Cheddar Demon. Make sure you watch it on Blu-ray if you can. Oh, yeah? That's the best way to watch it, because if you watch it on streaming... Yeah, the streaming can't catch up to the to the color. And it's oh, got... Really? It's like... It's a high-contrast movie as term in terms of uh, color grade is hmm. concerned. Uh, it it uh, has bright hues of uh, red, pinks, and purples. Uh, and it has like this, uh, it, it's like a bad trip movie. It's drug cinema, but with biker Cenobites. Oh, wow. Okay. And, now I want to watch it. And, uh, but you have to watch it on Blu-ray. That's the only way. Cause if you, if you try to stream it, you, I guarantee you're going to have a bad time because it's going to get, your streaming will get pixelated. It will try to yeah. keep up. We well, couldn't handle you get, it. What it well, if you get it on like iTunes, you can download it first, right? Oh, I have no idea. Mm, it's probably going to be a digital copy. I don't know. if it, It's gonna, probably going to be the same as a stream copy. I if don't it's know. a digital copy on your machine, then it probably would play better than a stream. But, yeah, yeah like we loved it. I remember we went to go see it at the Alamo Draft House in Dallas. The, um, and we went like on a Tuesday morning mm. at like 10 a.m., and our freaking server was like, this is a really weird movie to be watching this early in the morning. And we're like, go to hell. We were the only ones there. <laughs> so an, an, interesting, an interesting tie to one of the episodes we did last week where we talked to Martin Mercer is that Martin Mercer has been doing storyboard work for Renfield, which is a movie coming out where Nicolas Cage plays Dracula. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, that's I'm crazy. I'm so, so excited. And then what's yeah. his name? That guy is Beast. Oh, um, he's in that, The Great. He's in The Great, yeah, that I watched that show. Oh, that's a good show. No. No. He's the young Beast in uh, X-Men oh, First Class. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I don't okay, know I know what you're talking about. His also, last name's Hunt? He's also in Kill Your Friends and Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, Okay. Yeah. yeah, but he always gets like little roles, um, and I don't feel he really gets as much chance yet to um, to take leading roles. Uh huh. Um, he's a good actor, and he's gonna be yeah, and he's gonna be in uh, in that Renfield movie too. So it'll be interesting to see how you know all the power plays out. Huh. I was just watching while you guys were talking. I was watching the trailer for Possessor by Brandon Cronenberg. And holy crap, this this looks good. This looks dope. Oh, yeah, and it is Mandy. I double-checked it. Yeah, it is the girl that plays Mandy. Cool. I, oh. I saw her face in the thumbnail, and I kind of... Because I saw... Uh, last one I saw was The Color from Outer Space. Um, yeah, it was all right. It was I all right. That, I saw too. that in the cabin. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, it was, and I almost fell asleep near the end. It was sad to but, watch, I thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to watch Pig. I want to watch Pig. Uh, <laughs> Pig, no, was, pig pig is better pig is pig, a lot yeah. better than than color out of space oh. yeah yeah and, i want to watch that one that's yeah the, uh, that's, yeah but yeah we watched actually speaking of color out of space we watched a documentary about how everything fell apart during their um adaptation yeah their adaptation of um 
What's it? Island of Dr. Moreau. Island of and, Dr. Uh, Moreau. Marlon Brando. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was Marlon Brando and, and Val Kilmer. And Stanley, who directed Color Out of Space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was, he, yep. he, like, manipulated his way into making the Island of Dr. Moreau, and he was, like, trying to do some black magic spells. Oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, he said he had like hired or whatever some magician friends to do the sure. to do these spells so, for him. And uh, yeah. I, I all bought him badness. pizza one time. Richard Stanton. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. a bit wacky. He lives like in some castle area. I don't yeah, know. he. Fun. Where was that? That was in Portland at the at a film festival in Portland for the Cabal Cut, and uh, and he came to this Cthulhu film festival thing where they showed Nightbreed and and I had a pizza party for the listeners and Russell Charrington invited invited Richard Stanley. Oh, okay. Yeah. That so documentary. I, huh? So I, I he introduced me to him, but I didn't really have any long conversations with him or anything. Uh That's wild, man. Yeah. You threw a happening party it sounds <laughs> That's like. Right. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yay. <laughs> all right um cool i got some recommendations here so that's awesome keep your eyes peeled for the brood which we're going to be doing a commentary possibly with joe because because catalina volunteered him it's like when they say uh volunteer <laughs> yeah. step forward and oh, catalina yeah, took a step back <laughs> yeah i don't know if i have a copy of it i'm sure we have we will wrestle one up okay you'll find one in vhs yeah and jojo we- baby uh, this was one of our fun episodes. We recorded this on a Thursday night, and uh, it's pretty laid back. It was great having you guys here with us, Joe and Catalina. Yeah. Thanks for inviting us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.